Most people who walk in the countryside, they never see things like this. Never will. And until you get into these ditches and dikes with a net and sieve the mud in which these things live in, you'll never ever see them. And to me, they're fascinating. I first became interested, oh God, that's gone back a few years. Probably about 69 years, roughly. I was about six, six years old. On the beach with mum and dad, sitting under the cliffs. But I found this little, strange little thing. And I couldn't work out what it was at all. And I had no idea. But it wasn't a stone, but it was very hard. It was pink. It had a very strange sculpture to it. And uh, I put it in my pocket. But I kept going back to it and thinking, what the dickens is it? And that's basically where the obsession started. But I'd still got that first one that I'd collected all those years ago. I'd uh, put that in a little gold glass fronted case somewhere, I think, and uh, said that was the start of my life. <laughs> Later in life, I could well see the need that all these things were suffering like mad. Everyone had this absurd obsession for managing land, and these things just cannot escape from man. With his machines, they got no legs, they got no wings, they got nothing. They just slither along in the undergrowth, dragging this lovely shell with them. And there they should be left, but of course we don't leave them. And that's what I eventually went into. I'm doing these surveys, finding where these things are, advising landowners in the hope that they would protect all the life. Until we understand fully what's going on out there, we can't look after them, because we don't know what they do. But it was worth doing, and we're still doing it. Keep us off the streets. <laughs>